Pop Up Flamby's Advent Calendar. Oh, I, a, 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 ha, he, he, a. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another episode of Papa Flemmy's Advent Calendar. Yet again, physics. Oh, so exciting. Harmonic approximator. Check out the shop. You know how it goes. Okay, 10 to 50% of everything. Just like with the last one. Okay, here's our Lagrangian. And we have our Euler Lagrange equations. And this time, Edward machine. What we have right here is basically a type of row. Okay, maybe there's a picture of an actual Edward machine that you. Uh, can see right here maybe then you know what it looks like this thing is um, has its purpose in physics definitely um, you can actually find out the gravitational constant with it near earth okay if you use some stuff we, we have done this in the first semester it was the most annoying piece of shit I have ever um, used but yeah um, finding out the actual equation of motion is quite a fun thing to do that's why I'm doing it okay we have this roll right here and we have a yeah, we, we have this little thing right here. Um, this is rope. We, <laughs> we have this rope with a certain length L. Okay, I'm going to call this length small l. And we are going to talk about what this length is exactly. Then our roll that we have right here, okay, actually has a radius of R. And we have a big mass and we have a small mass. And what is going to happen physically? Okay, um, well, this mass is bigger. This thing is frictionless, let's, let's say it's frictionless and it's going to go in this direction, okay? It's, it's going to fall down basically our bigger mass M and it's going to drag this one with it, okay? This is what is going to happen. Now, yet again, we would like to bring in some coordinate system, meaning I'm going to put the coordinate system in here. Okay, we have some Y and we have some X yet again and we would like to work with this. We need to find out the kinetic energy, so we need to know where our masses are at all times. This time we have two masses, meaning we have two kinetic and two potential energies, okay? Do not forget that. And we can just do the superposition of those kinetic and potential energies to get our total kinetic and total potential energies. Now, at first let us take a look at what our length of this whole thing actually is, of this whole rope. Well. It's basically comprised of this. We have those two parts. I'm going to call this first part y1, um, okay? And then we have the second part y2. Now, we already know that this is basically, if we were to deal with vectors, then it's just the length of the vector. I'm going to put it without the, uh, without the magnitude. So we have y1 plus y2 plus, okay, the last part of our rope is actually going around this roll that we have right here. Meaning the whole circumference of our roll would be 2 pi r. Meaning half the circumference is nothing other than pi times r. So plus pi times r. And this r is not going to change over time, it's simply constant. Okay, this is our whole length and this relationship is going to be important in a minute. Now also what we want to find out is where our masses are at all times. What I want you guys to notice is that we can put it really simple this time. Meaning if we were to find out our kinetic energy of the big mass, it's going to be m over 2 times the change of the y position at all times. Okay? I, I hope you can see this. It's basically staying constant on the x uh, line okay, so let's say we have x being equal to 2 It's going to stay at this point all the time or x being equal to r in this case Meaning all that's really going to change is our y1 coordinate over time Meaning our velocity of our big mass is actually nothing other than y1 dot but squared Okay, I hope you can see where this comes from also we have the The kinetic energy of our small mass it's m over 2 times by the same argumentation y2 dot squared but having more than one variable is, is kind of messy because then you have more constraints and this is nothing that you want okay so you want to find a nice analytic solution in the end and we would like to reduce this problem to simply one one variable and the cool thing is we actually have this connection between y1 and y2 and it also makes sense physically what y2 dot actually is okay when you consider it um, with this y1 dot that we have right here let us differentiate 
the length with respect to time, our length overall is going to stay the same. So if we were to differentiate that, that would go to zero. Also, we would have that this is constant, this goes to zero, meaning y1 dot is thus equal to negative y2 dot. I hope you can see where this comes from. Meaning overall that we can express this as m over 2 times negative y1 dot squared, but the squared gets rid of the negative sign. This is curious, right? Okay, our velocity squared are the same on this kinetic energy and it does make sense. So if this pulls on the string with three kilometers per, per hour, for example, then this actually also goes up by the same velocity, okay? It goes downwards with a certain velocity and this goes upwards with the very same velocity. It does make sense physically. Meaning our total kinetic energy T is thus those two added together. We have the same factor right here. So y1 dot squared over two and then m plus small m. Now, what about our potential energies that we have right here. Let's say u of the big mass. Well, all that's really acting on our masses is yet again our gravitational attraction, our gravitational potential, meaning we have m times g times, hmm, okay, what do we have right here? Well, our big m goes down in the negative y direction all the time and the height is always negative y1. Kind of the same spiel for our um. It's going to be negative m times g times y2. But now we would like to express this only with respect to y1. And y2, okay, if we take a look at our l once again, was y1 plus y2 plus pi times r. Meaning overall, if we were to, sell, uh, to solve for y2, this means that we have y2 is thus equal to l minus y1 minus pi r. We can plug this into here, leaving us with negative m times g times l minus y1 minus pi r. And thus our total potential energy are those two added together. And now we can actually construct ourselves the Lagrangian, okay? Our Lagrangian is thus this piece of shit right here, okay? m plus m and also minus those two added together, so this becomes positive m times g, okay, and also, yeah, I'm simply going to write everything out, l minus y1 minus pi r, and then we have positive m times g y1. And now we can simply solve our euler lagrange e equations, and our q in this case is this time y1, okay, it's our only constraint. Let us start with this thing right here. We are going to differentiate at first our lagrange partially with respect to y1 dot. Okay, all of this is going to vanish, just like the last time with the inclined plane. We are going to track the two down, okay? Leaving us with d dt of and thus y dot, yes, y dot times m plus m. And now we are going to differentiate this with respect to time, leaving us with simply a force, okay? It does make sense, this is just how it works with Lagrangian y double dot, big M plus small m. Also, we are going to differentiate our Lagrangian partially with respect to y1, meaning all of this is going to vanish in the process. And if we were to differentiate that, this is going to become m times g. L and pi times r are just constants. They are going to vanish and we are going to have negative m times g, okay? Meaning overall g is a common factor. And thus we have small m no, big M minus small m. Okay, and basically we are done at this point. Now, this right here is our equation of motion and we can actually divide both sides by big M plus small m. Okay, masses are not defined negative, so this is always greater than zero. Okay, or if we don't have any mass, then it's zero, but that wouldn't make any sense. Okay, then we wouldn't have this system. So y double dot is thus equal to g, the gravitational constant, m minus m over m plus m. And now just like with the last time with the inclined plane, we can integrate both sides with respect to t, leaving us with y dot being equal to g times t, m minus m over m plus m, 
and then plus some initial velocity, v0, and thus, if we were to integrate this yet again, our solution to this differential equation for the Edward machine is thus y of t being equal to g over 2 t squared m minus m over m plus m plus v0 times t plus some initial y value, okay, plus y0. And this is it. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, recommend channel. Like if you want to support channel, buy those harmonic approximator shirts. Okay, they are quite nice. And yeah, uh, if you want to see more physics, let me know. I know you want to see more physics. You don't really need to let me know, but I'm too lazy to record physics stuff. Okay, I'm more of a mathy guy. But this right here is actual fun, okay. <laughs> Don't forget to send around those videos everywhere, such that this advent calendar gets a bit of a recognition and a few views, okay? I want the next video have a slumble day. Ciao! <lacht> Akiro will gleich wieder spielen. Hm, super, Anton. Ugh. <sighs>